much for coming into my video. Today, we will be talking about kimono fursuits, and we will go over the origin, the pros and cons, and why they are so hard to find a maker. Kimono fursuits in their style originate from Japan, the land of all things cute and unique. Kimono's name comes from the name beast or animal. That's why you hear cat girls be called kimono minis because animal and mimi meaning ear in Japanese. So, animal ear. No more you know. Contrary to the American toonie style, kimono suits feature large eyes with glass dome, smaller muzzles and mouths, and a heavy pear-shaped body with a heavy lower portion. You can say they lean more towards the chibi style in anime. All this cuteness put together can look amazing, but they aren't the most practical when it comes to functionality. Here are some pros and cons when it comes to kimono physics. Pro number one. They have great vision. Those big eyes give a wide range of view. Con, their tiny mouths give really bad ventilation. They make it hard to breathe, and they have to be exactly on your mouth in order for you to get any kind of airway. And because they're so tiny, those little bands that you see don't really fit in your mouth very well. So it's kind of hard to get any airflow going in. Pro number two, they're extremely adorable and really unique, especially in America, where all the styles are toony and more realistic. Whenever you walk into the room, people will be sure to turn heads and want to take pictures. Con, those cute little leggies that they have make it hard to walk, and all that extra weight can be hard for you to lug around for hours at a time. It will force you to waddle and walk a little funny, which could look absolutely adorable. But for you, you're kind of struggling on the inside. So if your legs aren't very strong, this still might not be for you. Another con is it's hard to wash them. Because of their plastic bone eyes and the extra padding that they have, it can be really hard to find a way to clean these suits. You will have to have a large washing machine to put all of that you're padding in. And you have to be especially careful with the head because you don't want these plastic domes to get scratched or dirty. It will be a really hard thing for you to clean. Besides all those pros and cons, I obviously really like this style. If this style is something you want and you enjoy, well, it's time to find a maker. But it's easier said than done. Depending on where you are, it can be incredibly hard to find a kimono suit maker. Here are some reasons why it could be vastly different. Reason number one. Most kimono suit makers are across seas, usually in Japan or China. This makes transactions and communication rather difficult. Sometimes they won't even speak English. Number two, even if you find a maker that speaks English, sometimes they won't work with you internationally. Mostly because of the reasons stated above. They have a hard time communicating and translating. The currency conversion to whatever con currency they use. And your currency could be difficult to manage. And shipping can be insanely pricey. Everything will be much harder when you're thousands away from your maker. Reason number three is, since they're so popular internationally and from the origin, they're usually closed because of how popular they are. You probably will have to wait months, maybe even years for your maker to open. Patience is always the key if you are dead set on having your dream maker be open for commissions. Reason number four is, they can be insanely expensive. Because they're so popular and they're in high demand, they rise up their prices in hopes to 
cut down on their slots and get more bang for their buck. Prices can range from anywhere of 3000 just for a head up to 6000 US dollars for a full body suit. This isn't all makers though. Sometimes you'll find a diamond in the rough and they'll be pretty decent in their price range and their quality. So just keep looking. Don't let this discourage you from trying out the kimono style or finding a dream maker. Sometimes with enough patience, you can make anything work. Who knows, maybe even from waiting for your dream maker to open, you'll find an even better maker who is even cheaper than the maker that you previously had. You can find most kimono makers on Twitter, sometimes on Instagram as well. The way most of these kimono suit people do transactions is by interpreters. These people are able to speak English and will most likely put pre-mades, commissions, and all the information of the maker that they have up on their site so they can help translate what they want with you as a client. Be careful though, this can be scammer territory. If you suspect that a translator or agent is a scammer and they're stealing work from other makers, make sure that you ask for the Twitter handle or Instagram handle of that specific maker and ask them via translator, Hey, I saw that this interpreter or agent is selling your work. Are you aware of this? If they say yes, I'm aware of this, they are my agent, then you can go ahead and commission them. If not, if they hesitate in any degree, make sure that you stay far away from them to save you and your money. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so, so much for staying until the end. I really appreciate you tuning in every day. If you want to have more content like this, make sure to subscribe and support me on Patreon. With enough subscribers, we can make this a full-time thing. And I would be eternally grateful if you even consider supporting or liking or subscribing. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.